desk with Rosanna Lockwood. Good evening. An hour of straight reporting and analysis coming up on the news desk tonight. Interesting. We'll have to read between the lines on that one. But, Tan, let's talk then a little bit about sort of polls and leadership because we saw some data this morning that Truss is actually leading out ahead of Keir Starmer by three points. Now, is the prospect of a Liz Truss government beginning to scare Labour? No, I think, um, <laughs> as I said earlier, any a one of these... wide-ranging Afghanistan is basically Beijing's entry point for its high-value Belt and Road initiative and a key access point for Central Asia, an oil-rich Iran as well. And there's been a lot of talk about China's interests in Afghanistan's enormous mineral resources too. First of all, I'm going to give my own questions to Aswath. We're going to chat uh, for around 20 minutes or so, and then I'm going to turn it over to you, the audience. I want to encourage you now. Do submit your questions. You've got that tab function in the top right. And some might argue that it was the uh, the pandemic and the speed at which they were able to come out and complete those orders and get that order book filled in fact, quicker. I think you're making my, you're making my case because the reason Boeing was in, able to do, do that. From was... Singapore on this Tuesday in September, welcome to Squawk Box, I'm Rosanna Lockwood. Good morning, folks, I'm Martin Sung. Let's get a look at your headlines at this hour. History. The worst first half since the 1970s. You're going to be hearing a lot about the 70s throughout the show, especially with our next guest as well. A lot of research, you know, done. looking at Total, for example, a massive company with, you know, ESG concerns, as many energy companies do now. They're still very public about what they're doing in the Arctic. How do these massive corporate reconcile these developments in the Arctic with the environmental concerns? It's an excellent question and the reality it's is... out of total energies. Uh, they have come out, this is the top line, saying they will no longer provide capital for new projects in Russia. And this is hot on the heels of comments by Bruno Le Maire uh, just earlier uh, talking about needing to isolate uh, Russia entirely and placing pressure on Total, what some were saying, to follow in the footsteps of companies like BP and like Shell who have cut ties with much of their Russian projects. Now, inflation and debt, those are going to top the agenda. Let's just start with the inflation story different in every country around the world, but we live in a globalized economy. So could we see a more harmonized approach in terms of addressing inflation risk worldwide? Because with all due respect, you're not an elected political official, but you do have a lot of influence, of course, as a very successful entrepreneur. So how are you saying that businesses can work with government here? The story. Ross? I mean, when we say uncharacteristically low-key, we are still talking about thrones, you know, and Bentley limousines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but not horses and carriages yeah. and crowns. This still a high bar. Yeah. yeah, it's still a high bar. <laughs> but a lot less pomp and circumstance in this year's Queen's speech, which is the official reopening of the UK Parliament by the Queen, Queen given by the normal comments that you hear <laughs> about a three- or a four-day weekend. That is all we do have time for at the moment. Uh, thank you to our panel, Tan, Emily and Bim, and thank you for watching. Tom Newton Dunn is back in this chair tomorrow. Up next here this evening is Piers Morgan Uncensored. Good night.